welcome back to this week's edition of the Rock and Roll Ghost, Ghost Podcast. Um, this week we have uh, writer, actor Jonathan McLean. Uh, he has uh, he's co-written uh, The Outfit with Graham Moore, who some may know from The Imitation Game. Uh, the Outfit is opening this weekend. It stars Mike, Mark Rylance, Zoe Deutsch, Dylan O'Brien, and Johnny Flynn. Welcome to the show, Jonathan. Thank you, Brett. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. Um, well, let's, let's talk. Let's start talking about the outfit right away. Um, yeah. You're you're li listed as a co-writer with Graham. Was it uh, a, a, a co-writing process, or did one of you start it? And I mean, how did how did that process actually uh, begin? Right. The, well, the actual execution of it was well the the whole thing began because we were at dinner several years ago. I've known Graham for years, and we were at dinner before Imitation Game. And he asked if I knew a, a good tailor in LA. And uh, I was like, yeah, I have a great tailor. And then I just said out of the blue, I was like, hey, how come nobody's ever made a movie about a tailor? And he said, I don't know. I was like, that, we should figure that out. That'd be cool. Um, and that was the beginning of the idea. And then we kicked it around for like a couple of years. Like, what would this be? What would it look like? And then both of us finally got free and had a little time at around the beginning of 2018. And so then the actual process, which is your question, began with us just meeting. We live about a mile from each other. So began with us meeting in a cafe near our houses um, like two, three times a week. And for a year, we would just meet two, three times a week for a few hours. And I have notebooks full of ideas that we just wrote and wrote and wrote. Um, and then we graduated to sort of a traditional whiteboard kind of a thing where we'd put up the whiteboard and mark it out and try and figure out the act structure and what happened. And we just did that over and over again for a really long time. And then right at the beginning of 2019, we finally decided it was time to pull the trigger on writing. And so we had written something together before that didn't get made. So we kind of had a shorthand for how it would work. And we basically just pass pages back and forth. Um, Graham will write scene, a handful of scenes, send them to me. I will write a handful or do a revision on his, send him back. And we just did that. And then uh, that was actually really quick. And I think exposed for both of us the value of spending the energy up front doing the, the plotting. Um, because the first time we'd written something together, we didn't do that. And we wound up having to do so many drafts because we were just figuring out as we went. Um, there, there were still tons of drafts with this thing. I mean, obviously, you know, you get the thing, you turn it in and everyone gets excited about it, but then there's always stuff you're going to want to change. And even when we got to London where we shot it, you know, once we got through the rehearsal process with the cast, we discovered this isn't working or that isn't working. And so we would go back to our apartments at night and work on it some more. So uh, it's really, it's really a, a very much a hands-on process. We like being in the same room together when we're figuring it out, but when we're actually right. in the, the typing, we go to our separate corners. It's, it's just easier. That's cool. Uh, yeah, I wasn't sure how that, how that was. Cause I mean, he's, you know, known as, you know, I mean, he's an Oscar nominated screenwriter of his own, own right. Um, you know, and Oscar I, winner. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so I wasn't sure how, how this came to be. And it, it's great that you guys knew each other and actually had actually worked on something before. I mean, yeah. And, yeah. and like, he's really, I have to say, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I have to say like no, cool. about Graham that I will, will, will tell anybody who will listen is that, you know, I've worked with, I've been very fortunate to work with lots of successful people, other Oscar winners, you know, Tony winners. Anyway. Graham has the least ego of anybody who's sort of achieved the things that he's achieved of anybody I've ever met in my life um and his 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 focus is his focus is what's the best thing to serve the material Ooh. and i don't care who uh who gets credit for it we're, we're working on something else actually right now and the other day it, it is great and the other day he read something uh that i don't know that we'd worked on and he goes, well, what I really like is this thing here that you did. And I said, you did that. That's actually something you wrote the time before. I, and he goes, oh, I did? I forgot. But it just yeah. goes to show how little he is invested in who did what and how much he's invested right. in what's great, you know? Yeah, no, that, that's awesome. Um, it's really that, awesome. It, it's really cool. Well, 
how how um how long from when you sat down with the whiteboard to um uh figuring that you had it where you needed it to be to to go out and look for financing wow what was what was that kind of time yeah it's, i guess we we like i said we wrote once we moved from the whiteboard to the script the whole process of starting to really talk about it to having a finished script was probably about 15 months yeah um and then uh then you know show it to agents see if you know what they think about it if they have notes if they're into it if they're like you know because this isn't something that we had actually talked to anyone about right contrary to conventional wisdom where a lot of people will reach out to their agents or whoever and say does this feel like something you can sell graham and i were just like let's just write something we want to write and then figure it out that makes sense yeah it does it's a gamble though right so we held our breath a little bit while the agents read it and then they were like no we like this we think we can do something with it so um then we attached our our friend scoop scoop wasserstein is one of our producers and he was the first person to come aboard and scoop uh read it also gave some notes so we did some more revisions based on that and then we started doing um you know, when you talk about financing, Graham has an Oscar, that's great, but he's a first time director. So right. we knew that financiers were going to want some assurances that the cast was going to be, you know, something they could sell and market. Um, Zoe Deutsch, who's in the film, was the first person Graham met uh, ever uh, on the on the project. So we always knew we wanted Zoe. Um, and then we just started kind of you know, making lists of talent and figuring out who we could maybe get get our hands around. And funnily enough, Scoop, uh, in the meantime, went to Film Nation, who did finance the film. Uh, Glenn Basner is the CEO, who's a wonderful guy and has impeccable taste and said, read this script and let me know what you think. And they came aboard and said, oh, no, we'll we'll do it now. And we said, you don't want us to attach, you know, like, Tom Cruise or whatever, right. and as and they were like, no, no, we're we're good. We'll 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 do it now. But with what with the script and Graham and what we've got in front of us, we feel comfortable. And so that was probably I think September of 2019. And and so at this point, we're now whatever 2018 September 2019. However many months that is, 17, 18 months into longer into the process, and we were pretty well ready to go make a movie and then covid and the most the, the the most remarkable thing is that no one bailed on us like zoe was attached dylan o'brien was attached mark rylance was attached film nation was it no one gave up on us no one's you know they could have very easily shelved it and they just hung in and hung in and hung in until we could figure out where we could get enough insurance because covid adds you know covid adds a ton of cost to the budget right yeah and so they had allocated a certain amount, so we had to figure all that out, but they just stayed with us and stayed with us. And so from the time Graham and I started plotting to the time that we went off to London to shoot 2018, 2019, 2020, was three years. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, now, um, oh, God, I had a question I was gonna ask you, and I yeah. left my brain, but um, how, well, did the year they actually I remember it now? The, was it always intended to be kind of a one location um, setup? Yeah, yeah, it was. It, some people have have speculated that we did that because of COVID, but that's not the case. It was always yeah. going to be a single location affair. Um, a lot of reasons. Uh, I think one of them is again, Graham being a first time director, he wanted to do something that he knew he could manage. Um, my, you know, my background is in theater. I spent years doing theater. Yeah. And so I kind of understand how the, the mechanism works in that regard. And, and, and we, I don't know, it just all made sense. And then there's also, you know, broader sort of artistic reasons, right? Like mm-hmm. as we got into the character of Leonard um, played by Mark Rylance, he's such an internal guy who doesn't leave the shop that he works in. It is his whole world. Right. And, and we sort of started getting excited by the idea that if we're only going to see it through his eyes and and we do we don't ever see anything that leonard doesn't see um that it should exist within the parameters of the world that he has crafted for himself 
Yeah. And then there's also like a cool writing challenge too. You know, how do you keep something exciting and engaging for an hour and 45 minutes when you don't have, you know, a skyline to cut to or whatever. Right. Um, and so it was, it was just, yeah, it was very deliberate and it was always the plan. Well, I know I read somewhere where Graham felt it was a cool challenge um, to direct it with, in that way to, to make every shot feel different. Yeah. Nothing, nothing, you know, to not, not to repeat himself, not, at least not too much in terms of setups or, or yeah. whatever. Um, and it, it really does work well as a one, you know, location uh, uh, film. Um, I, I actually was pleasantly surprised at how much I, I liked it because I, I didn't know what to expect. I, I thought the trailer looked great, but I didn't, you know, you never know by a trailer. Um, and honestly, and I, I'll, I'll be honest, I, I am not the biggest fan of Mark Rylance as an actor. I haven't found every role that he's been acclaimed for. I haven't understood why he just, he tend he tends to, uh, to turn me off for whatever reason. I, I, it's unexplainable. I'm sure, he, you know, he's a great guy and he's obviously acclaimed, but this is the first time I was like, yeah, this is, this is right. He's perfect for this role and he's excellent in the role. Everything about him was meticulous and everything about it was surprising, especially, you know, uh, finding out more about his character. Um, I would not have suspected what, you know, his past was. Right. Honestly. Um, so you guys just did a phenomenal job in setting all of that up. And I think you gave everybody gave a did a great job with their performance but you guys just gave them everything to work with well know? thanks we, we tried to i mean i my, my count a valid opinion certainly um mark is like my favorite living actor um yeah. like absolutely i think that he can do no wrong and if 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 uh if you ever have a chance to see him on stage i would say like definitely rush to do that it's astonishing to watch well that's what i've heard he's supposed to yeah but he's supposed to be he's, he's spectacular on stage and I, i've heard that yeah and and because and i and i don't say that to sort of you know to i think that's you know they're they're there i won't say their names they're actors that people adore that i'm like yeah they're fine uh, yeah, <laughs> so i totally no. get it but because oh, yeah. i do love mark's work so much um and graham and i both respond to him so favorably I think yeah. it may speak to what you're saying because what we tried to do is really park. I mean, we wrote it for Mark. Well, like we, yeah. that's not happenstance, right? Like we got lucky that we got him, right. um, because you never know. But we you're, did. You're you're basing it on kind of what he's able to do. He he was our model, and so there was a lot. Every time we would talk about uh, the character, there was a lot of like, well, you know how Mark Rylance, you know how Mark Rylance, and so we really yeah. tried to park it right in his wheelhouse. And so I'm glad to hear you say that you responded to it because I think that what we wanted to do is really capitalize on what he excels at, and it's all yeah. that stuff that you're seeing in the film. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. No, it's it's always it's always nice to come to respect or like somebody that maybe you didn't like before because. Um, you know, you're, you, it, if you just don't like somebody, like every, anything they're in is just a, you know, a chore to sit through. Like if you like somebody else or like the director and they choose, the, you know, somebody you just can't stand watching on screen, it's like, oh my God. Um, but, you know, it's really nice to have, have your opinion turned. I, I, you know, I, I, so I wasn't avoiding this because he was in it. I actually, it, the movie looked cool, sounded cool. I, I love the fact that it was, uh, you know, you filmed it in London. It was set in Chicago. You yep. know, about the Chicago mom. I'm a, I'm a Chicago guy, and I know you spent some time here. Uh, I did. To that at, at some point. And that's where Graham's from. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, Graham grew up in uh, in Lincoln Park. Oh, that's that's cool. Oh, that's yeah. right, right, Graham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I don't know why I was thinking of somebody else. Uh, sorry. I for those that did. You didn't hear the beginning. I am just getting over a, uh, a cold, so I am a little flighty uh, at the moment. Uh, um, but yeah, so let, let's talk about the the actual filming. You were obviously there in London, still working on revisions and stuff. Um, how long was the shoot in the end? Of, you know, uh, from start to finish. Uh, Twenty four days. That, that's pretty quick. I mean, a yeah, lot it was of it was real quick. But yeah. Um, 
And were you doing a, a lot of rewriting on, on the film or was that just after the rehearsals? Yeah, not a, no, not a ton, certainly. Like, and, and nothing structural. Like the movie right. is the movie, right? right but right. as we went through a rehearsal process with the actors, uh, you know, there'd be just lines or beats or motivations that were unclear and we would just right. try and clarify that. So uh, nothing like got thrown out and, you know, for the most part, if you read the script, uh, what we wrote is pretty much what's on the screen. Um, but there were just sort of, I don't want to give too much away, but there's a, a big sequence uh, in the middle of the movie where the, the bad guys are going to do something very bad to someone that Leonard cares about. And, right. um, and, and Mark and Graham and I were trying to figure out the best way to really motivate that for him and have him feel right. like it was coming from a grounded place and so forth. So like, that got a little bit of work done on it. Um, and then also, you know, you find a good actor and we have a ton of good actors in this film will yeah. figure out how to find the truth in what you write and make it their own. But you also want to give them things to say that feel like it's in their authentic voice. So as we got on set and discovered, you know, like, oh, maybe Dylan feels more like this energetically, like we can punch up right. this beat or that beat. So that that was kind of where it happened. And it wasn't a ton, um, but but it was, uh, and I think it speaks to how warm and open Graham is as, as a director yeah. that everybody felt very comfortable saying, you know, can we try this? Can we look at this? Everybody's opinion got taken advantage of. And I, I mean, and I mean, everybody, like if it was, I don't know, one of the PAs on the set who, you know, Graham, I, one time somebody was, I can remember who it was. It was somebody in another department. We were trying to figure out something in a shot or something. And somebody whispers and Graham sees them whispering to one of their friends. And he's like, well, no, 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 speak up. What, what, what's your thought? And they were like, well, I don't know. I thought maybe if we put the camera here, it would be. And Graham was like, that's a great idea. Let's do that. So he yeah. really, he engenders that kind of, kind of collaborative energy. And, uh, yeah. and, and so, so, you know, the tricky part with that, of course, is if you open the door a little bit, there are people who will be like, all right, well, let's change everything. So you want to be right. a little cautious of that. Right, but, right. But, but that right. was, well, you also have to be creative too, when you're on a, probably on a tighter budget on tighter, tighter schedule things like that. But, you know, there are certainly things you can do within that framework to make small changes that make yeah. something stand out. I would no, no doubt. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the reason for shooting in England was that the filmation's I, uh, decision in terms well, of budget? At, yeah. I mean, sort of like after we got COVIDed, um, yeah. we had to figure out, you know, where we could the, you'd think that it would be super easy, right? Because all we need is a soundstage. We can go anywhere. Right. Um, but, you know, places were shut down. Places, Some places weren't letting people in. Uh, we thought about trying to shoot in the States, but just the, first of all, COVID rates in the early part of 2021 weren't great a lot of places. Sure. The COVID protocols add a ton, like I said, to the budget. And then there's the insurance issue. And a lot of insurance bonds weren't really accounting for COVID specifically. I honestly, like there are actuarial tables, I'm sure somewhere that I didn't get to see, but right. someone figured it out. But my understanding is what ultimately happened was um, the UK was willing to basically create like a, a, a governmental backstop on the insurance um, and kind of partially underwrite the production. Um, That's interesting. Okay. Because they were drawing in production and so it was it was funny right because we went to they were in the middle of their third lockdown when we all right. left to go to London and it seems counterintuitive that we would go to this hot spot uh instead of someplace else but it was because they just made it feasible yeah. and then you know shoot as Graham has said we hope to shoot our next movie not in COVID because it it was I mean it was a lot you know it's yeah. on a film our size it was a lot I can't imagine what it's like shooting a film with like you know a thousand extras or something well I, I i talked to an actor recently and he he filmed uh for a few days on the will smith Ant antoine fuqua movie that's uh the slavery film for apple yeah he said you would you would be taken through three different camps to right. be tested before you got to set yeah so yeah i mean and that's a movie that's bound to have a lot of extras because it's about 
you know, slavery in, in America in, you know, the 1800s. So yeah. um, I'm sure it had a big, you know, big amount of people on it, but they had to, yeah, they had to be, you know, extremely careful. On yeah, something. it's a heavy lift. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? With, well, with regard to, so you were there for about a month, all told, in England. Uh, uh, Graham, Graham was there for like three months, and I was there for two, because uh, okay. we had to go for pre-production, too. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, have you have you spent much time in, in England before? I have. Um, been a few times. My wife and I have been a few times, and then we went back to London for post-production, which was wild, because that was in July. And so, you know, I, I basically saw, like, the block that I walked from my apartment to the soundstage for the whole time I was there. That was it. That was all the outs because it was locked down and shut down and COVID. Right. And when we went back last summer in the middle of July and COVID restrictions had mostly been lifted, it was like, oh, right. I forgot that London is like this. Yeah, you yeah. know, uh, London in February in the middle of a COVID lockdown was super drab. Uh, right. London in July oh, and open again was, you know, awesome. I mean, it's, it's, it's one of my favorite. I, my wife's a native New Yorker and I lived in New York for years. I love New York desperately. Yeah. London's also one of my favorite cities, you know, it's a great. Yeah. I, I got to go as, as a 10 year old. And, um, I got to, my grandparents took me to London and they took me to, to Brighton. Um, oh. and I enjoyed Brighton more as a kid, but, um, I really have always wanted to go back as an adult and, and see it with adult eyes yeah it's a great town it's just you know it everything all the charm that ted lasso makes it look like it is it, yeah. it is it's all that <laughs> yeah. uh well let me i want to talk a little bit about um one person in the cast that really surprised me mm -hmm. i hadn't heard of them before i know that they're kind of making a name for themselves is, is johnny flynn mm -hmm. um and he was giving me serious James Woods combined with Noah Emmerich vibes for some reason. Nice. And I, I, he just felt really alive and really electric and really fresh and new. And I just wondered what was your experience with cast, you know, with casting him and, and, and just your knowledge of, of him as an actor and a person. Um, well, I'll go in reverse order. As a person, I would crawl backwards naked across broken glass for Johnny Flynn. Like he yeah. is the best. Um, I love that dude. And he is a consummate professional. Um, and he got on our radar in part because he and Mark had done theater together before in London. Oh, really? Yeah. So they knew each other. And, um, and we watched, it was funny. We, we watched a movie he did called Beast um in which he's great um and i'll have to check that out yeah it's really good he's terrific um and emma the one he did with anya taylor joy so we checked that out but then for our thing he had actually put himself on tape for a different project that he had auditioned for so we got access to that audition tape and it was a reason we wanted was it was an american accent that he was doing so we wanted to yeah. kind of hear that and uh and i was like oh this this dude's like a star like this dude's a movie star. When can we talk to him? And then Graham and he chatted and they worked together and just, man, a consummate, consummate professional also happens to be a world-class musician, like has a record deal. Right, I, I, I read about that, yeah. And it's funny because I didn't really know that. And while we were on set one, one day, I said, what have you been doing at night? How, how are you taking you know, your downtime? He goes, well, I'm finishing up this record I'm working on. It's like, oh, I'd love to hear your music. And he sends me like a little Dropbox folder or whatever. And it was that thing of where you you say to your friend, yeah, man, I, you, you're being polite, right? Yeah, I'd love to hear yeah, your music. Yeah, I'd love to hear your music and you're expecting it to be horrible. And right, or just, you know, I'm figuring out how I'm going to not hurt his feelings. And then he right, said, right, that. and I'm like, oh, oh, my new friend is also a world-class musician. <laughs> <laughs> um He's terrific. So I'm so glad that you that you cited him and, and, and singled him out because I do think that he is really special and yeah. um, and just, you know, what's great about him. And I can I observe this both from the perspective of a guy who wrote a part that I wanted him to do and also someone who is an actor and knows what that craft is. Right. Like he's so dialed in every moment and really present to his scene partner, whoever he's in a scene with. Right. He's giving them his full focus and really making 
making the the scene something that they can shine in and it's this really selfless way of performing and it has this reciprocal effect of also just making him look great and he's got that quiet sort of he doesn't have to do much to convey a lot and i I just i think he's the best i love him i love johnny well in in the trailer he jumped out at me you know i'm like man that guy he has a real and like I said, he has a real, like, early on James Woods, you know, uh, dangerous quality about yeah. him. He just yeah. he just feels like, I mean, I'm sure he's a sweet guy, but it's he's one good. of those, he's one of those guys that could embody dangerous without doing much. And yeah, he, yeah, you know, yes, yeah. it's, it's amazing. It's I, it, his performance, I think, is amazing. And I, I think if if there's somebody that is casting a role for you know if somebody in his age range that it, it isn't looking to him for you know as a possible you know lead it, it they're fools because he's he's absolutely genius in this movie i'm so glad you said that yeah i agree with you completely yeah and everybody i mean even like somebody like dylan o'brien who i knew from you know different things who you know maybe i didn't consider him you know as serious because of those, you know, those kind of studio, you know, things he was doing. What, he was in the Maze Runner, I believe. Yeah, he was. The, the trilogy, yeah, which I, you know, another young adult thing that I didn't pay attention to, you know, and, but a bunch of girls and, and young young people probably love, but it's just not something that was up my alley. Right. But it was really good in his role. He had a lot to do, which was really interesting. And I, I just want to go back to your script. Your script is one of those ones that, everything that lays up what's revealed at the end has to be so perfectly executed because I'm just curious, did you have the idea of the reveal or the, you know, the ending and Mm -hmm. work backwards or did you work forwards and come up with how the reveal would be? It's a good question. Um, The prior, we knew that that was the direction that we wanted to bring it. And um, and so uh, some of the work that we did across that year that we beat it out was figuring out the most interesting way to get to that reveal. Um, right. Because, you know, again, without saying too much, a lot of what this movie is about is what we present to people versus what who we really are underneath, right? Right, um, exactly. And so figuring out how to do that in a delicate way was a lot of the work. Yeah. Well, you start to you you start early on, kind of questioning like uh, Mark Rylance's character Leonard, or English as he's mostly referred to, yeah, um, starts doing and saying things that are not you know they're they're lies you know or he's covering up for something and you're not sure why he's doing what he's doing, and it, it's interesting to see how that plays out. And he does, it's a delicate game that he plays throughout the whole film is that he, he, he has, it's like he has it all in his head. He sees, you know, like a, like a card sheet, he sees 10 moves ahead of time or something, you know, and he, he, he's working it out and you see him working it, but you still don't see it, how it works out until he gets, until it gets to that point. It's, it's, it's why I recommend this movie so much. Um, but yeah, the outfit is a is an absolutely brilliant film, and and again, we're so I still have a few more questions, but it's out in theaters this weekend, and I, it's at local theaters too. It, it's it's amazing that a small film like this, you know, quote unquote small, is getting a, a good release. Um, I, I think it's a good focus. Film. Yeah, yeah, focus features. Who's our distributor? Has they've been? I mean, I can't say enough good things about them, and they've just been behind us as fully as Film Nation was, and we the amount of lo- good luck that we've had with the people who've cared about this film and put their shoulder yeah. behind it is, is pretty great. Yeah. Well, I want to talk a little bit. You were, you were born in South Carolina, correct? I was. Yeah. Did you live there up until you were uh, through college? Or? Well, I was 17 years old. Yeah. 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 I was born in Myrtle beach, South Carolina, which people either know because they went on spring break there at some point in their lives <laughs> or because they watched uh, Eastbound and down. Uh, All because, right. Yeah. 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 Um, but my grandmother was the city librarian there for like 35 years. Oh, nice. I, was, I was born there and then we moved around a lot, but I would uh, spend every summer there hanging out at the beach and like 
hanging out at the library. So, you know, the beach and books are like the two things that I grew up caring about. <laughs> yeah, so, that's cool. Yeah, it's well, all right. That's a good, that's a good background to have. I'm sure, I'm sure books were a important part of your, your, uh, you know, child raising years. Oh, big time. Yeah. 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 Um, but you came up to Chicago and, and you performed in a show called Like It Is, a one man show that, that got a lot of raves. What, what drew you to Chicago to, to begin with? Uh, yeah, I, I, two things. One, um, I didn't want to go straight to New York because I know enough about myself to know that I am, uh, I'm a late bloomer. <laughs> um, and, um, and, uh, and also like I had this real sort of <clears throat> theater was so much my focus and I had this very mythologized fascination with the Steppenwolf theater ensemble and Malkovich and yeah. Gary Sinise. And, and it's funny because now a lot of those people, the original founders have become friends of mine, um, Jeff cool. Perry, you know, and Laurie Metcalf, I now know personally and like, it's very, very cool. Um, but that was sort of there. And then the other, you know, big, big reason was my best friend growing up uh, went, was also an actor and he went to the theater school at DePaul. And so he was a year behind me or two years behind me, I think. But regardless, I was like, okay, I can go live with my friend who's also do, does what I do in Chicago, safe space. And it'll be like, you know, it'll be like a proving ground. I can figure it out. And so, yeah, that was when I wrote Like It Is, which was this like nine character, one man show that, you know, it's interesting. It was the early nineties and John Leguizamo was doing his stuff then, and Eric Bogosian was doing his stuff, and Anna Devere Smith was doing her thing. And, yeah. and I, I think about it now, and it was pure, and it had great intentions, and, and people responded to it really well. But like, I, I wrote a care, I was about nine different characters intersecting and engaging in America at the time. You know, if I were to do it today, I probably would not have written uh, 